I've had an idea to make a wall clock like this for a little while now and being that I had this nice piece of scrap walnut lying around the shop I figured that would probably be the best thing to go about making it out of and so to begin I just took it and ran it a couple cleanup passes through the planer and then squared it up at the track saw and the table saw to get one nice square piece. So to set up the layout for the clock I had to get the center point of both the height and the width of the board itself. From that I could strike a line on both of those to give myself a grid of 90 degree intervals which would represent the 12, 3, 6, and 9. From that point I set my compass to half of the diameter that I wanted the actual circumference of the clock to be. Once I had that set, I could use the center point in the middle of the board to draw that circle onto the actual board for the clock itself. Once I had the 12, 3, 6, and 9 and the circumference of the clock itself established, I could then set up all the numbers that go in between the main numbers of the clock. And to get those, they're all on 30 degree intervals, so I just use a compass and, re and referenced off of each one of those 90 degree marks to get each one of those numbers that go in between. Once I had made each one of those marks onto the clock, I could then connect each one of them across the face of the clock with a straight edge and that would give me each one of the 12 marks that I would need to start drilling the holes for the clock itself. To make sure that whenever I was setting up all of the, the holes to be drilled for the look of the clock itself, I laid out where the movement would be on the front so that I would give myself a visual of where I didn't need to be as far as where I drilled the holes because the last thing I want to do is drill holes into the clock face and then have that interfere with where I have to drill the relief in the back of the clock for the movement itself. So once I have all of those reference marks, now I can start to lay out where I want the holes to be drilled on the clock itself. Now the main ones are pretty easy because I have that circumference drawn out on the front of the clock. I can hit the, the, the top of each one of them where it actually intersects that circle. And that's where each one of the, the main numbers are going to start. And I'm just using a center punch to sort of give myself an indention that I can follow later with the Forstner bit. One thing I did before laying this clock out as far as the spacing on each one of the circles for the face itself, I, I did a test piece and that's something I don't normally do but it really worked out in my favor this time and was really handy because by doing it on that board I could sort of play around with different measurements and kind of get myself a nice even spacing so that I didn't screw it up on the main part of the clock because I definitely from what I initially came up with changed it a little bit after making that initial test piece. To make things easy as far as being sure to to make sure that each one of the marks are all spaced out exactly where I want them to be. I used a set of dividers and a ruler and I just sort of set the dividers by the ruler itself as far as the amount of spacing that I wanted for each hole and then went to each one of the marks on the board and sort of made an indention with it. That's the good thing about the dividers is you can sort of poke it into the surface and it gives you a nice point to where you can later go back with your center punch and make the indention a little bit larger. So we're to the point now where we get to drill a lot of holes and this definitely got to be a little bit monotonous after a while because it was a lot of changing out drill bits and drilling a lot of holes especially once it got to the smallest ones but I knew from the beginning and especially from doing my test piece that I, I did earlier that I wanted the main 
numbers on the clock, the 12, 3, 6, and 9, I wanted those to have a different diameter hole and to be more pronounced on the clock face itself than all the numbers that go in between. So this was another thing that I benefited from doing the test piece. I got to sort of see what I had in my head be laid out on onto a board before actually going through and putting it on the finished piece and then not liking it. So it was definitely beneficial to do that. It wasn't until this point that I actually decided to add the frame around the clock because I just really felt like it needed a little something more. And so I decided to make one of these recessed frames like I had seen many times on John Peters' channel and I thought it would work really good in this application. Here you can see that by using a, a scrap piece of plywood the same thickness of the plywood that I would eventually put on the inside of the frame, I was able to sort of do a test run and also did a test run with the band clamp itself so that I could get kind of an idea of how things would go together. And I don't always do tests before gluing up, but in this instance, I found it to be pretty helpful because I was able to sort of get the exact layout that I wanted as far as the edge grain on the front of each one of these pieces of maple. And here I'm just cleaning the excess glue out of the corners before it dries and hardens and it's a lot more difficult to remove. And also checking for squareness. So initially when I was cutting the pieces of maple for the outside edges of the frame, I ripped each one of those widths according to what I would need to give me the proper amount of reveal for the clock face itself in combination with these plywood strips that I'm now adding around the, the inside perimeter on the back of the frame. I sort of glued each one of those pieces in individually, letting them dry in between. And you may also notice in this one last shot here that I added a staple to each corner miter of the maple frame itself, maybe just for a little bit of added insurance. Now to get that nice shadow line around the clock face itself, not only is the frame cut an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around, but it's also painted on the inside with flat black paint. So after waiting for a little over a week for the clock movement itself to come in through the mail, I was finally able to drill the recess into the back of the clock which turned out to be about a quarter of an inch because the clock itself or the, the clock face itself was about three quarters of an inch thick and the movement allowed for a half inch thick face. So by removing that quarter of an inch, it worked out pretty nicely. I wasn't overly concerned with how this recess look because it wasn't going to be seen anyways. I just wanted to make sure there was plenty of room to fit the movement into. Once all the holes were drilled and everything was set up the way I wanted it, I could finally start sanding. I first started off by hand by flattening the edges of the frame and just getting the initial part of the clock sort of flattened down with some 80 grit and then going through the rest of the grits on my random orbit sander. For the finish, I am using Danish oil on the walnut clock face itself, and for the frame, I am using a water-based polyurethane because I wanted to try to keep that maple as bright and clear as possible, and it also is pretty handy that the water-based finish dries nice and quick.
After adding a couple of small dabs of super glue, I centered up the walnut clock face into the frame and then allowed the glue to dry. Once the glue dried, I could then go from the backside, pre-drill, and add a couple of screws on the top and the bottom that would hold the clock face onto the frame. All that's left after that is just attaching the clock movement to the face itself and then installing all the hands and setting the clock. And as long as you follow the instructions that come with the clock movement, it's really a pretty simple process. I was really pleased with the outcome of this clock. I think it came out really cool. It's also going to be helpful because we didn't have a clock in our living room and now we do. I don't have to always check my phone to see what time it is. I want to thank you guys so much for all of the support and thank you for all the positive comments every, every video that comes out. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, I would like for you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I try to post videos as often as I can. Sometimes life gets in the way and you don't get to put as many videos out as you want to. Um, I've also got an article accompanying this video if you want to check that out for a few more details. That's pretty much it for this time. Happy trails. Thanks for watching.